The Brewers needed a big time start from Colin Ray. They got it. His first win as a starter in the majors since 2016. The bullpen helped out. Defense was great. And some late offense carried the way to a win over the Astros. That and the Brewers signed an all-star pitcher. All that's coming up next here on Locked on Brewers. You are Locked on Brewers. Your daily Milwaukee Brewers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Locked On Brewers. I'm your host, Chuck Freeman. A 6 nothing win over the Houston Astros. The Astros had won eight in a row and 11 of, twin, 11 of 12, and the Brewers put a stop to it with a, a win at AmFam Field. And it was a terrific win. Put the Brewers back on track. Yeah, for a while, they weren't scored runs. It was a 2 nothing game until the eighth inning. But then they put up four runs in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Gave some cushion. Didn't have to use Devin Williams. And uh, the bullpen did its part, and so did Colin Ray. Thanks for joining us here on Lockdown Brewers, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. We are your team every day. We are here with you seven days a week talking Brewer baseball. After every game, weekends, versions are a little shorter, but you can find us on any of the platforms that download a podcast, Google, Apple, to name a few, Spotify, any of those sites. There's several of them out there. I list them on my Twitter site as well. My Twitter, Chuck Freeman, F-R-E-I-M-U-N-D. Please follow along. Love to have conversations with you back and forth, positive or negative. Back and forth, we can go all day long, 24 hours. I always love love to try to respond to you. I get a lot of tweets at me and all that, but uh, you know, DM me, tweet me, whatever you want. Uh, love talking to the great Brewer fans. I've been covering this team for over 40 years for AP Radio, and of course, I'm the morning sports anchor at 1310 WIBA in Madison, longtime sports talk show host here in Wisconsin, and my number one team, professional sports team, is the Milwaukee Brewers. Yeah, I can get down on them just as much as the next guy. But when they win a game like they did on Tuesday night, you know, I mean, you play a game like on Monday night, you lose 12 to two, couldn't get out of your own way. Your ace gets just crushed, gives up four home runs and says after the game, he's, he thought he pitched good. And then you come back and have a game like this from Colin Ray and the bullpen. But you didn't have to use your closer. And Owen Miller continues to hit. And yeah, it just was a great win. Uh, terrific win. Cardinals uh, also got the job done in Cincinnati, 8 5. So the Brewers stay five games ahead of them. But as for Ray, as I mentioned, yeah, his first win since 2016 as a starter, a guy who's, uh, you know, called upon this season uh, many times uh, and has pitched very well, more than we expected. As I've always said, hey, these AAA call ups. You know, you get what you get, and, and a guy who's kind of a journeyman like Colin Ray, you know, you'll an inning a game like tonight where he pitched into the sixth inning on shutout baseball, absolutely. When the Brewers needed him uh, the most, you know, because they're coming off a tough game on Monday, the Astros had been on a roll, and he silenced that offense. That was great to see. And how about Owen Miller batting in the upper three forties right now? Three more hits. Uh, interesting numbers on Owen Miller, who homered as part of that four-run eighth inning that gave the Brewers some cushion, and they did not have to go to Devin Williams. 13-game um, hitting streak was snapped on Monday night. He comes right back on Tuesday. Homers, three-hit game. He's got seven three-hit games in his career, but three of those seven three-hit games have come in the last 12 games with the Brewers. Again, another guy who was just projected to plug and play here and there, but with the way the Brewers are struggling for offense, you can't take him out of the lineup. You just can't. You can't take him out of the lineup. You got to continue to run him out there because he's been one of your best hitters and a guy who's just been, you know, fantastic uh, in many ways on this team. A spark plug. In fact, when they when he hit the home run in the eighth inning, when he ran the gamut in the in the dugout, they forgot to put the cheese head on him. Right away, Weimer ended up putting the cheese head on him, but they almost forget. It was almost forgot. Oh, and Miller goes yard for you at a big moment like that, and expands that out to a six nothing lead. You got to crown him, and they did. Uh, so that was fantastic, uh, getting the win. Also, Anderson, Brian Anderson, 
It was a 2 nothing game going into the eighth inning. A big gapper, a two-run double, made it 4 nothing. opened up the floodgates right there, and you knew the Brewers were going to go on their way to a win. But, uh, yeah, I just thought the pitching, that was the story of the game. When your starting pitcher can come out and a, a guy who's at the back end of the rotation pitch like he did tonight in a much-needed spot, get into the sixth inning. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of offense, and once again, I was thinking to myself, and I've, I've just said it so many times, I want to put it on Twitter again, but you're, you're putting pressure on your pitching staff to go out there every night and to perform. You didn't do it Sunday. You got, you got some offense. But it was like, man, 2 nothing for the longest time. Uh, you know, you're know, you going to put Devin Williams in the spot in the ninth inning where he's going to probably get the job done for you. But you, know, you don't want to rest too much on your bullpen. But Pagaro came out. Piamps pitched great. Strzelecki, uh did the job as well. And uh, the Brewers were able to avoid using Williams in a game like this, setting up the rubber game. All the three-game series coming up on Sunday. And be facing a pretty good pitcher. We're going to talk about that a little bit later on in the show. But Owen Miller raking again, the three-hit game, another home run, and you know the offense with the late explosion, getting the do- getting the job done. We're going to get to your tweets. We'll uh, get to the box score, and the Brewers pick up. Julio Teheran, uh, the one-time Brave, two-time All-Star, has had some issues, um, pitching issues, um, in the last several years. And and that was one time one of the bright and upcoming pitchers in Major League Baseball. We'll talk more about that coming up next here on Lockdown Brewers. Chuck Freeman here on Lockdown Brewers. Good to have you along here on, um, what is this? This is a Tuesday night. Yeah, Tuesday night. Um, Tuesday night. With uh, an afternoon game on Wednesday, it's an earlier start. It's our first twelve ten starts. We don't have too many of those twelve ten starts, but we got one coming up on Wednesday. So that means after the game on Wednesday at AmFam, which will probably <laughs> you, the game might go so quick with today's baseball rules that you might miss rush hour traffic. Normally, an afternoon game at AmFam Field when the game lets out and on traffic on ninety four, it's a complete mess. But this game might actually get done before the rush hour, which picks up right around 3 o'clock. I feel like it's getting earlier and earlier in Milwaukee. But we'll get to we'll get to the Brewers' pickup of uh, Julio Teheran uh, coming up here in a little bit. Bird Dogs, new sponsor here on Lockdown Brewers. Um, I tried their pants out tonight again on the golf course. Stretchy pants. They sent me some pants. And I haven't delved into the shorts just yet but the pants i'm telling you i've worn them three times now warm friday night uh when we went out to eat uh warm earlier in the week to golf and and they're like my favorite pair of golf pants went out uh earlier before the brewer game tonight uh shot myself a 41 on a quick nine and they stretch they fit and you know you put on a couple of extra pounds uh, they'll bend and squeeze and and fit you just right they are just a, a great fitting pair of pants you can wear these casually like i said on a golf course uh if you're going out with friends going on a date whatever um they give you the freedom um just like the shorts do they have a little lining in there and it is all good so go to birddogs.com backslash locked on mlb and when you enter the promo code locked on mlb they'll throw in a free custom bird dogs yeti style tumbler that's about a 20 dollar tumbler they throw in there with every order so uh, but you got to enter this birddogs.com backslash locked on MLB. And when you enter the promo code locked on MLB, they'll throw in that free custom bird dogs, Yeti style tumbler, try the pants, try the shorts. It is all good, but by all means, you're looking for a good pair of pants, good pair of golf pants. That is the way to go. Lockdown brewers on the lockdown podcast network. We are your team every day. I'm your host, Chuck Freeman. Good to have you along. We'll come right back after this timeout and tell you about Uh, what's ahead for the Brewers, and how they plan on filling one of their spots in the starting rotation with four guys on the injured list. That's next here on Lockdown Brewers. Welcome back to Lockdown Brewers. Chuck Freeman here. Great to have you on. And all you everydayers out there, you know, those of you who join us every day, I hear from you, and I, I love to hear from you, chatting back and forth about our favorite sports team, our favorite professional sports team, the Milwaukee Brewers. 
Find me on Twitter, Chuck Free, but F R E I M U N D. We download usually a few hours after the game on one of your favorite podcast sites, Google, Apple, which you know, loaded up right in your phone right there, Spotify. It's all good. Just subscribe to us and get the automatic download every day. And you'll be the first to listen because, you know, Lockdown Brewers is the number one Brewers podcast on the internet because we're here every day. We're five days a week, Monday through Friday. And on weekends, we're cutting Lockdown Brewers shorter versions on weekends to keep you updated because, hey, you know, Brewer News, Brewer things are happening on weekends as well. And we got it covered right here. Thanks for making Lockdown Brewers your first listen to every day. And the Brewers will wind up their series with the Houston Astros coming up at 1210 on Wednesday afternoon. Catch every pitch of the Brewers hometown broadcast, Sirius XM, the SXM app. Search Brewers. You get all 162 games right there. The Brewers' hometown broadcast against Sirius XM on the SXM app, Search Brewers. All right, let's talk about um, let's talk about this new acquisition the Brewers made here. Yeah, four starters down, and I and I put on Twitter today. I'm gonna take a quick drink here of my lemonade. Oh, I put on Twitter today. Yeah, the Brewers are in desperation mode because they are, and some of you came at me and said, well, the Brewers aren't on des- des- aren't in desperation move. Um, but they had to make this move because of all the injuries. Well, yeah. Do you think they would have made this move if they didn't have the injuries? Do you think they'd even think about Julio Teheran? Do you think they'd even think about him, 32 years old, a guy who'd been in the San Diego Padre organization most recently, um, their AAA team? Um, was four and two down there had a minor league contract a couple of days ago, opted out of it so he could sign his deal with the Brewers. Now it's not been announced by the Brewers just yet. The Brewers have not announced this move because he's got to pass a physical. He's got to pass a physical. Now, if you know the history on him, two time all-star, he was one of the up and coming great pitchers with the Atlanta Braves. Lost his command, his velocity dipped. And before you do it, he was bouncing from team to team, pitched for a while in the Mexican League, and uh, found himself with the the Padres AAA team uh, here in the spring. But the Brewers uh, are going to look like it's going to give him a, a major league contract. Um, but yeah, it is a it's a move of desperation, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing because the Brewers they have no choice at this point. They need some bodies to pitch games for starters on the injured list. I've never heard of that before with the Milwaukee Brewers or other teams. I mean, four four of your five preferred starters going into this season on the injured list almost had five with Burns several weeks ago. Remember, he had to come out of a game. I believe it was at Seattle, I want to say. Um, But he had to come out of a game. So, and he did not have to miss a start. He did not have to miss a start at all. But, you know, with these guys on there, especially with Woodruff, you need bodies and you're hoping, like the Brewers have done with Wade uh, Wade Miley, a reclamation project here. You know, that's, that's what the Brewers do. That's what small market teams do. And this is what teams who lose four starters in the rotation do. They go up and get a player like Julio, who they hope can come in, work in the Brewers system, and give them a start or two or three or whatever. And if he works out, who knows? No promises for a guy like that. But if he goes out and performs, it's his spot to lose. So, yes, it was a desperation move, but... If you're going to make a desperation move, I'm glad it's with a a guy like this who's got a history of success. Yeah, some of his greatest success was three, four, five years ago, six years ago. But still, I was watching some of his old film on YouTube with the Braves, and boy, he's got some good stuff, or he had some good stuff. If you could recapture that, fantastic, because the Brewers are just trying to hang in there Counts is just trying to piece this thing together moving forward. And uh, 
by signing to Heron today uh, or agreeing to a contract, if not officially announced. Um, his last appearance in Major League Baseball was 2021. It's like signing Darren Ruff to hit left-handers. You, know, you, you needed some left-handed help. This guy was on the beach, Darren Ruff, and he decided to pick him up. You know, Julio, same thing. You know, he was a guy who was down at AAA, opted out of his deal, and it's big for him as well because he knows he wants to, if he doesn't have much left in his major league career, this might be his last chance, and he's got a golden opportunity. He's pitching for a team that's in first place in the National League Central if he passes his physical. So, yeah, I'm all for that. I, I thought that was, you know, it was a move that, you know, again, the Brewers didn't want to probably make, but a move that they had to make. So, all right, uh, let's get to the box score here. Let's get to the box score. And before we move to that, we'll tell you about the Brewers and Astros play on Wednesday afternoon, 12-10 start, not a 12-40 start, not a 1-10 start, 12-10 start, early start, businessman special, I think they used to call that. 12-10 start, knock off of work, head out to AmFam Field, it was a beautiful night there tonight, 73 degrees. Supposed to be a little nicer day, uh, another nice day tomorrow, but I think it's going to be a little cooler tomorrow. I think, it, let me check real quick. I, I believe when I saw the forecast earlier in the week, I always check the forecast, you know, see how it's good for. Yeah, it's going to be in the 60s. So slight chance of a rain shower, clouds. So it's not going to be as nice as it was tonight. So I would say the roof is probably going to be closed. But who cares? It's May. It's Wisconsin. Go enjoy the Brewers and Adrian Hauser is coming off a nice performance. We'll talk about that coming up here in a little bit. Oh, yeah, I was going to get the box score. And we're going to get to your tweets as well. We'll get to those coming up here in a little bit. For the Brewers today, Christian Yelich went one for three with a strikeout. Jesse Winker, one for four. Big hit to start off that eighth inning. And four-run rally. Then he went from first to third on a hit by Telez. Willie Adamas went 0 for 4. Willie is hitting 203. Rowdy Telez, 1 for 4. Big base hit in the eighth inning I just mentioned. Uh, Tyrone Taylor did run for him and then moved to right field. Uh, Brian Anderson moved from right field to third base. I don't think I've seen a player move from outfield to infield as much as I have with Brian Anderson. Mr. Versatility on this team. Guy can play right field, tough place to play, and then move over and play third. That's a tough adjustment. And we always say the ball always finds you. The other night he made that adjustment, went from right field to third, and a chopper came to him at third base and made a nice barehanded move, but he's doing great in both positions. Uh, Owen Miller played third base and first base tonight, three for four, the home run, a two-run shot in the eighth inning for both of his RBIs. Bryce Terang went 0 for 3. Victor Caratini did the catching tonight. Um he was 0 for 4, down to 232. Joey Weimer, homered in this game, also made two nice defensive catches. Two nice defensive plays. And for that matter, Terang had a nice defensive play as well. Weimer went one for three, two Ks, a solo homer. He's batting 204. For the pitchers, uh, the pitching lines here today, Colin Ray, five and a third, four hits, four Ks, two walks on 82 pitches. Lowered that ERA, ERA under five at 4.71. Piamps, two-thirds of an inning, struck out two. Elvis Pagaro, who had a rough outing on Monday night, one inning, one K. Peter Streslecki. Peter's not been the Peter that we all know and love in the last couple of weeks. But he was on Tuesday night, one inning, two strikeouts, Bryce Wilson mopped up in the ninth inning, the 6 nothing game, gave up a base hit, went one inning, and the Brewers used five pitchers to combine for the shutout. And uh, let's see, how many hits did they allow? Five hits. Five Astros hits to, again, a Houston Astros team that had been on a roll. All right, Adrian Hauser on the hill coming up on, uh, on Wednesday afternoon. We'll talk about that. And why, yeah, the fans at AmFam Field are booing Jose or, uh, or El Tuve. 
and for good reason as well. You bet. We'll get to that next here on Lockdown Brewers. Chuck Freeman here. I uh, want to tell you about another one of our new sponsors, Rocket Money. Now, if you have a subscription out there, there's probably subscriptions you don't even know about. You, you might be subscribing to something on your cable or satellite TV service that you have no idea you're getting. You might be getting a, a magazine or a newspaper in the mail once a month, and you're wondering, how am I getting this? And not think twice about it. You might be subscribing to, I don't know, something for your computer to take off viruses, and you don't know about it. But you're getting charged every month. Sometimes you don't check those bills as much as you should. Rocket Money is going to do all this for you. Rocket Money uh, is going to help you save some money. Uh, they'll alert you uh, to a change in your spending and subscriptions that are out there that maybe you shouldn't be having at this point. Rocket Money can save you money. I've heard stories of this where Rocket Money has saved people hundreds and hundreds of dollars because they realize they're subscribed to something and they don't know that they have a subscription to. So stop throwing your money away. You're all out there like, man, we work hard for our monies. We work unusual hours. You know, we work overtime. We work odd jobs and all that. So stop throwing that money away. Cancel unwanted subscriptions. Manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash locked on MLB. That's rocketmoney.com slash locked on MLB. Rocketmoney.com slash locked on MLB. And I promise you, promise you, they will save you some money. Yeah, El Tuve was in the leadoff spot. You know, he's been hurt most of the year. And um, the fans let him have it every time he came to the plate. And yeah, cheaters, part of the cheaters, Bregman too. Okay, yeah, they cheated. Absolutely. Yeah, when Ryan Broad went to Wrigley Field, he got it from Cub fans like 10 years later, it fe I felt. And so what? Um, Altuve, Bregman, yes. Cheater, cheater, cheater. Yeah, cheated to a World Series. Absolutely. So, yeah. I saw some pushback on that today. Oh, we shouldn't be booing L2 V. Yeah, absolutely. Darn right. Uh, Adrian Hauser uh, pitched so well. Best outing of the year. Pitched into the sixth inning last Friday night. Got a no decision in Tampa. Best outing of the year because his previous two starts had not made it past the fifth inning. So he makes his fourth start coming up on Friday. He's facing... Uh, Brandon Bielak, 27-year-old right-handed pitcher, pitching well this year, 2.89 earned run average, uh, struck out nine against Oakland in five innings of work. Walks control seemed to be an issue with Mr. Bielak. And uh, big game. Again, the Brewers are, are missing Framber Valdez, the Astros' ace, thank goodness, uh, after the Astros took down the Brewers' ace, Corbin Burns. On Friday. So, yeah, that's the way it goes. B lock against Hauser in the wrap up at the Brewers. Once they get through that game on Wednesday, they have a night game Thursday and a first of a four game set with the San Francisco Giants. They just saw the Giants out in uh, the Bay Area a couple of weeks ago, uh, dropped two or three to them on the back end of a road trip. And now uh, they come home and they face them. Let's get to some tweets. Let's get to some tweets. Han says, hoping this win brings them some, some momentum going into tomorrow's game. A serious win against the Astros would feel great. Absolutely. A win against the Astros always feels great. I don't know why I have so much anger toward the Astros, but man, I just don't like, I don't like cheating college football or basketball programs. And especially at the professional level, don't be cheating. And I know there's only a handful of those guys left on that team, but man, you were part of it. Hans, right on. Let's get a win. Nick writes, pitching defense and the offense deliver tonight. Hopefully a win like this can get them going again. Yeah. You know, the Brewers need to get on a little bit of a roll. They have, you know, they swept the three games from the Kansas City Royals a couple of weeks ago, but need to get on a roll once again. Evan responds to my tweet when I said picking up uh, Julio uh, Tehran was a desperation move. He says, that's exactly why it's not desperation. They have no other options. 
Hand was forced. Who knows? Maybe this dude actually bounces back and pitches well for us. Yeah, that's that's desperation. You just said it without saying it. Yeah, but who cares? He's on the roster, passes that physical, and he'll be on the team. And we'll see when he pitches in his first game in a Brewer uniform. Never thought I'd see him. I, I, I joked on Twitter today. I said, uh, I would have liked the signing of him back in 2016 a lot better than I did now because he was an all-star. He was a great up-and-coming pitcher back then. But we'll we'll see if we can fix him and get him going and uh, add him to the rotation and as well as why we try to get other guys healthy as well. Again, the Brewers take on uh, the Astros 12-10 coming up on Wednesday afternoon. Catch every pitch of the Brewers' hometown broadcast, Sirius XM on the SXM app, Search Brewers. It's going to do it. We'll be with you tomorrow. Uh, by the way, I'm going to be doing a joint podcast tomorrow with uh, someone who does Lockdown Astros. And they want to ask me about... Corbin Burns possibly becoming an Astro. And I'm going to tell him. No, I'm, he's not going to like what I'm going to tell him. So if we get around to doing that, that'll be tomorrow. That's going to do it for me. I'm Chuck Freeman. Thanks for joining us. We are Lockdown Brewers on the Lockdown Podcast Network. We are your team every day. We'll talk to you tomorrow, everybody.